Like any other computer, Proxmox VE needs to be kept up to date with regular patching. But unless you take out a subscription, you won't have access to the enterprise patches. However, Proxmox do actually make available some free updates, which is their non-subscription updates. And although they are intended for non-production environments, they do seem to be quite stable. So how do you configure Proxmox to take advantage of non-production updates? Well, if that's something you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now there are two ways that we can configure Proxmox to get access to the non-subscription updates. One is using the GUI and one is using the command line. Now I will cover both options in the video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a timeline in because I'll start with the GUI option, then I'll do the command line option. But if you want to be able to just do it through the command line, that timeline will give you an option to just jump straight ahead. Now this server that I've got here is running 7.1-4 as it mentions. And to update it up through the actual uh, GUI is actually really, really simple. So if I click on the server itself, and then I go down to where it says updates. At the moment, it's not showing any updates that are available, but if I click on the refresh button, it comes up with a pop-up saying I've got no valid subscription, which is fine. I'll click okay. And then what it does, it goes off and finds out what updates are available. So it's going out to find out what updates are available for Debian. Now those are available for free, so there's no problems there. But you can see I'm getting um, messages like unauthorized and fail to fetch, you know, various information specifically from Proxmox actual servers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the close button there. And really that makes sense because I don't have an actual enterprise license. I haven't paid for a subscription, so I'm not going to get access to the Proxmox updates. But these are all of the available Debian ones. If I just minimize this, you can see that's the only option really. But what I can do is I can update the repositories and then that'll give me access to the non-subscription updates. So I'm going to click on here where it says repositories. Then I'm going to click on add. Uh, see OK again to this uh, warning that I don't have a subscription. Then from the drop down menu that I've got here, I'm going to select no subscription. So it does give you a warning saying that they're really only intended for testing and non-production environments, but that's fine by me. Yeah, they tend to be quite stable anyway. So I'm going to click on add. And basically that's added in an extra repository that the server can use uh, to look for updates. But one thing I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to select the one at the bottom, which is for the enterprise updates. I'm going to click on disable because, well, I don't have access to them anyway, so there doesn't seem any point leaving that active. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to where it says updates. I'm going to click on refresh again. Uh, click OK. It already knows about the, the, the possible updates for Debian, but now it's actually going and checking to see if I've got updates with this new repository, which is for the no subscription. And it's found some, so I'm going to click on the close button again. And once that's finished, I'm just going to minimize the Debian one. And now you can see I've got this big long list of updates for Proxmox itself. So to actually then take advantage of these and actually update both Debian and Proxmox, I'm going to click on upgrade and it opens up a separate window here in the browser. Just like any other Linux update. I mean, this one's using apt get dist upgrade and it's just running that in a, in a console session, if you will, in a shell that it's opened up in this web browser uh, window. And it's just asking me to confirm that. So I'm just going to type in Y to say yes, hit return, and then off it goes. Because before, all it's done is just updated the actual server about the actual packages uh, that are available uh, to get it up to date. And now it's actually downloading those files and it'll start to install them. So this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to pause the video here. Now the download and installation is actually finished and it is asking us to actually reboot the actual computer. So I'm just going to close the window and uh, just say yes to leave there. And then I'm going to reboot this. So what we've done is some significant upgrades to Debian as well as Proxmox itself. So it does make sense to reboot it. So I'll just click on reboot, say yes to reboot. 
then once it's back up and running, I'll bring you back. Well, Proxmox is now back up and running. And as you can see, we're on 7.1-12, but I like to make sure we're completely up to date. So I clicked on the refresh button again uh, to see if there's any more updates to apply. And there is one here. So I'm going to tell it to update using that package that we've uh, found out about. It'll install that. And then if it needs another reboot, then we'll do that. Otherwise, I'll run the refresh again, uh, see if there's anything more to apply. So that update is for the time zone and daylight saving time. So I'm just going to close that, uh, say yes to leave, run another refresh again. So it's off, it's gone and checked the actual uh, repositories to see if there's any more updates available. It's finished that. And that's it. So we've updated this server through the GUI. So pretty easy enough to do. Uh, the only trouble is if you've got a lot of computers, it's not all that practical. And this is something you're probably more likely to want to upgrade uh, through the command line when you've got multiple servers. It's much easier to automate it through a command line than you know manually going through the GUI. Now, another way that we can reconfigure Proxmox to take advantage of the non-subscription updates is through the command line. Now, if you've got a lot of servers, it makes sense to probably automate it, in which case you'd use SSH to get remote access. But in my case, there's just one server here to demonstrate this. So what I'm going to do is just click on the server, and then I'll open up a shell session instead, because within this web browser session that I've got, I can still do copying and pasting. So I need to edit the sources.list file. So I'll just paste that line in, and I'll just use a, a simple text editor uh, nano here. I'll hit return. And then I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, and I'm just going to paste in a few extra lines. So that way I can tell it about the non-subscription uh, repository where it can get information about the packages from. So I'll then just save that change. Another thing I'm going to do is actually disable the actual enterprise ones. So I'm just going to paste another line in. So this is to edit the, this list here for the enterprise uh, updates. And I'm just going to comment that one out. Because there's no point interrogating that to find out if there's any packages available when we don't have access to it anyway. Next thing we want to do is to then update the actual system, to find out if there are new packages to apply. So we've got our apt update command. So I'll hit return and off it goes and checks to see if there are new packages available. It's actually come back and says there's 112. So then I'm going to run another command to actually do that upgrade. So that's apt full dash upgrade. Then I'll hit return and it's coming back to say we've got all these upgrades to do. But sure you want to continue. So I'll say yes. And then off it goes, and it'll start to download and install all of these Debian as well as Proxmox updates. So this is going to take me a while, so I'll just pause the video there. Well, the download and installation has now completed. So next thing I'm going to do is to reboot the computer. And then once it's back up and running, I'll bring you back. Well, Proxmox is now back up and running. And as you can see, we're now on 7.1-12. I'll go back to the shell because I want to see if there's any more updates to apply. So we do an apt update. Let's see if it comes back with anything. No, nope, saying all of the packages are now up to date. So that's it. That's how we upgrade Proxmox through the command line. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share because that encourages YouTube's algorithm to suggest it to other people who might find it useful as well. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yeah, do subscribe. Just remember to click the little bell icon though, that way you'll get notifications when I send new content out. If you've got any comments, any suggestions, if you want to leave any feedback at all, please post that in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support the channel, I've left links to both Patreon and PayPal in the description below. But above all, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.